from Atlanta. I got over here last night. So uh, the Braves playing down in Miami beat the Marlins last night. So that's good. Braves are nine. Well, you're, at, you're at a baseball game? No, no, we, we're not. In fact, uh, I'd like to go. I've got to check the Braves schedule and see if while we're here in Atlanta, we can uh, – we can go to a Braves game. 0 0.97 miles. That's the walk from the battery uh, from there to Mallory's house here to see Tyler and Chandler. And um, I think baseball starts really mixing in with our with our market. Of course, we've got on the western flank the St. Louis Cardinals who've been struggling for a few years. Uh, on the eastern flank, it's Braves country. Down south, we've got the Rays. Not really – I don't know about the Marlins, but I know we got a lot of people that that follow the Rays, like your dad and, uh, and you yeah. probably. Yeah. Uh, well. No, I don't. I hate baseball. That's my problem. Well, it's more fun to be there than it is to Absolutely. watch it on TV. You, you and I, I mean, both that know. that's that's like a hockey thing. I got you yeah. Know, but I mean, now football's different. I'll watch football on TV and I'll go to the football game. Oh, uh, there's nothing whatever. like. And speaking of football. Spring, spring practice is in yeah. full swing. Lots of people report Gators had theirs on Saturday. Eight uh, spring games Saturday. I know it. I know it. And we need to be talking about it because this week we also launch our uh, SECU uh, and be having our first Texas-Oklahoma conversation. You yep. and Buddy Martin, a special guest, will be dropping that and pushing <clears throat> that as just a regular video that we'll upload. But hey, hit the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and get your pen and paper. Right, Rob? Pen and paper handy. Only uh, before midnight. Only night. And remember, remember, I'm broadcasting live from here in the horse capital of the world. <sighs> Absolutely, it is. It's because of the limestone is more. And than the Derby's out. around the corner. Yeah, coming up May. Oh, wow. May the 4th, I think it Is comes that, up. Yeah. May yeah. 4th. And, right. the, and Masters, did you watch the end? Did you watch, watch the Masters, finish? yes. Scotty Scheffler won. Second time in three years. That was pretty cool. That a lot of tradition. Cool. Reminds yeah. us, in the South, why we love it. It's a lot like college football. All right. It is. Allow notifications on your yes. Android or iPhone device. Okay? And watch it on your laptop. And you can sync sidelines. And by the way. Vehicle. And we also have a pretty good viewership on Facebook Live. So if you're watching us on that, great. Welcome. Just hit the follow button on the up there. You'll hit the follow button and you will get notifications when we go live there as well. And if you're interested in that, that is at Sidelines. You go to at Sidelines on Facebook. You'll find, you'll see the show logo. And that is it. All right. Got a good That's one. Get ready. Because, hey. Who's on today, by the way? We got Doug Dean going to be checking in from Birmingham in just a minute. Franz Beard. Uh, going to have some fun discussions about spring practice, college football, what's going on. I, I've got some interesting insight from the more people I talk to, fear not people, college sports are not ruined. The free no. market, I believe in the free market. It will work this stuff out. Uh, Think record about Record-breaking crowd in the swamp this weekend for yeah. the game, more yeah. than we ever have for a spring game. And, and that's hard to do nowadays because the big you know, monster crowds – People are kind of like, well, they don't do anything, but it's a good show of force uh, that to back the pro. And I believe I was listening to Allie Peak Wilbur on her podcast the other day yep. about you got to give coaches this this microwave society. It's exactly why you wander in the wilderness for decades if you're not careful. Look what happened to Tennessee after Philip Fulmer. You've got to give coaches time. We're going to talk about that today. Here we come, folks. Here Fuck we go. You. Uh Sidelines with Rob Brown. Talk sporty to me. All right, Rob Brown here with you. Uh, we're broadcasting from Atlanta again, right by the, the battery. And, 
you know, the more that we look around at what's going on in college football right now, the more you say, well, transfer. Guys have always been transferring. This is nothing new. And, no. and for whatever reason, everybody always likes to say, what's happening now is the worst it's ever been. This is just a blip on the radar in the big picture. And you got to get smart, intelligent people involved on your show that can kind of cut through all this nonsense and put it in the vernacular, in perspective. Doug B. Dean from Birmingham. He's trying. Yeah, we'll be on with us in a minute. And Doug, well, he's a, is he in his car? Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, but he's we're going to talk. Again. We're going to talk about it. But the, the, the what, what's happening? You know, you look at what's going on with coaching, sir. The, the, these fans, they love to talk the big tough. You know, Gordon Gecko and Wall Street. Oh yeah. You want a friend? Get a dog. You know. Oh, we got to get give the coach two years. You know, he's he's out of here. You're an idiot. You know nothing about running a business or anything. You try try building a show. Try <laughs> building a podcast. Try oh, building yeah. anything. It yeah. takes an inordinate oh, amount of work. Be, work beyond what you know. And oh, well, we got to get rid of that coach. I'd love to take a look at these people's personal lives and their <laughs> businesses, where yeah. they rank, where yeah. they rank on the yeah. sales ladder for production. Yet they're all about. We got to get rid of this coach. I don't know. I don't know Billy Napier's. Uh, I don't know what is every move, but he's won everywhere. He won forty-one games in four years at University of Louisiana. You've got to think about what a coach uh, has to deal with in today's world. Sure, they get paid a lot of money. Yeah, but you've got think about after the week after the Florida State Florida game or Auburn Alabama or Georgia, Georgia Tech, you've then got to re-recruit your current team. Then they open up the damn portal window. Then you got guys with their hands out wanting to redo their NIL deals, playing let's make sure. a deal. Okay? Sure. Then you got to get ready for a bowl game. So that <laughs> so it's it's not it's oh I forgot early signing date in December, uh, like around the 20th. So you've got to and that's where it forget oh, about tra- February. Tra- Portal opens, transfer portal closes. Yeah, You've yeah. Got, it opens, it, it opens ended. up. Yeah. Well, it opens like December 5th and it closes okay. in early January. But yep. transfer portal, re recruit your team, NIL, early signing day, and get ready for a bowl. Okay. Now, yeah. But yeah. you do have a lot of help. Yeah. I, and I agree. And I like Dave Cody out in Bellingham, Washington, longtime sports anchor, Channel 7 in Austin, Texas, 35 years. God, he knows Texas. He knows media. He knows sports. He's right. Got rid of Harson. Best thing Auburn ever did. You cannot bring in a coach. You, Br- Harson didn't like to recruit. He didn't. He he thought, oh, I can outsmart Kirby Smart, Nick Saban, and all these guys. Really? That's like bringing a chef in to a five star restaurant who doesn't like to cook. You got to be kidding me, people. Who doesn't want a Michelin star? <laughs> the, yes, it's the Michelin. It's, it's not the Michelin, Michelin tire no. star. It's, uh, it's the Michelin star. Where's your damn ascot, Brendan? No, I have it. Look at this. <laughs> there you go. Hey, it up I, I like, I like my thing great. I got here yesterday. Ooh. Huck, you, Huck, it, I got this. You know where it I got this? It makes you look all, it makes you look all like buff, too. Well, no, I got it at Bucky's, though, yesterday. And Poor I was like Doug looking for something that wasn't Doug hot. keeps trying to roll in here. We're going to try him again. See if okay. it works. Yeah. I don't see him, but maybe we can hear him. Doug, are you with us? Uh, I hear you. I hear you. All guys. right, good. Yeah, we can. Yeah. That's fine. Just go audio only. Yeah, audio until we can get to video. We, we, we hear, hear you, from Doug Dean. Doug, uh, look, morning traffic in Birmingham. It's brutal. I've, I've I've spent two hours moving two miles going over the mountain. If I hit it the wrong way on a Friday afternoon on a football weekend, but a uh, lot happening. You know, spring practice. They wrapped up at Auburn last week. Uh, we had eight spring games Saturday. want to get your thoughts specifically about Auburn because I'm harder on Auburn than I am any other school because that's my alma mater. But I'm sensing some movement on the upside at Auburn, which has got me really, really believing that year two under Hugh Freeze uh, will show substantial improvement. It is. I, I don't want to equivocate or make it sound like I'm waffling, but 
this time of year, it, not just analysts like you and Brandon and everybody that comes on your show, but <laughs> fans, we, we are so vulnerable to the confirmation bias from the field of psychology. We hear what we want to hear. We, be, <laughs> we go to an A-Day game and see what we want to see. But so let's try to be dial it back with, you know, discount some for hype and and, you know, the, the fact that it's so damn hard to, to read much into a day games because the, the a day game, by the way, is about to go the way of the dodo bird. Yeah. If you studied that creature, Rob, um, and I just don't see the, you know, fans are marginally interested unless they yell roll tide and they're going to pack Bryant Denny. I mean, I think you could have a bowling tournament there and, and they would show up and to their credit, but I just don't think it's, it's creating fan interest and the coaches are partly to blame players are partly to blame because it, it is more about not getting injured than it is about getting better. <clears throat> and so, but to your, to, to give you a thumbnail and you can react and we'll go from there. I think there's every reason based on a couple of positions that have been there, there's no question they've been improved there's no question that the wide receiver room is going to border on elite with perry thompson and especially cam coleman that you know your eyes are not lying to you when you watch him in practice and in a day he just brings a whole nother dimension to it and they've improved with several other portal gets rivaldo fairweather comes back ready to go we know what he could do last year I think you can count on him being about 20% better just because he's been in the program a year. Um, and then the, they've, they've made some improvements at O-line, but that will be a developmental thing for a couple of games. Uh, defensive front is turning out to be a pleasant surprise where it was thought as a weakness. The pleasant surprise, oddly enough, is coming from incoming freshmen who are just that good. So, again, you need to give them several games to get acclimated, but – then the last thing I would say for, for the people who want to lean optimistic for Auburn to move the ceiling from seven games to eight, potentially nine wins, if you look at the schedule, and that would presume beating Oklahoma in Oklahoma's first ever trip into the SEC road gauntlet out of all places, Jordan-Hare Stadium. But I, the coaches that have Hugh Freeze has changed might be the biggest reason to lean optimistic, not to go 11 wins, regular season but to to increase the ceiling to see improvement where they can get to eight and be knocking on the door of nine wins this coming fall yeah and doug last year you were right you were you were looking your numbers seven or eight wins you felt good maybe even nine but if you think about the losses that auburn had the georgia loss the alabama loss the new mexico state loss all those games Auburn was in – well, New Mexico State was an anomaly. But Georgia and Alabama, with a talent gap that's the widest it's been in over 40 years, Auburn played those teams down to the wire with better offensive line play. And Jason Caldwell talks about when Freeze took over, there were maybe two SEC caliber offensive linemen on the roster at Auburn. Now he thinks there's a dozen. That's a big deal, isn't it? Oh, hugely, because and, – and then you have to add to it what we don't know. We won't be able to answer this. I'm sorry, but the, the way they practice in, in spring, which is almost always base offense, base defense, it's vanilla. They're developing fundamentals. We won't know, but if you believe that Peyton Thorne was not inherently just an average quarterback when he played great competition, but that some of it was causal – it was causal because he didn't have wide receivers that could run a route and get separation. Um, if if that if it's, if it's at least ten or twenty percent that he didn't get help from receivers, which will make any quarterback look mediocre, then you, you got to figure Peyton Thorne's confidence will. And he's going to be the guy. Uh, no one else is really threatening him so far. That can change in August, but I don't expect it to unless Thorne has an injury. So I think when you see those receivers really get calibrated and polished as we head into fall camp that there's every reason with this first four games are winnable now you can argue the fourth one which yeah. is arkansas but it's in jordan hair in the first three games you've got an opportunity to polish things and i think we'll know pretty quickly is this a new peyton thorn with the the balance that we bring um, in the running back room tight end and wide receiver 
with good protection, we think, on an offensive line? Or is it same old Peyton? If it is, then Hugh Freeze better be working the portal hard for 2025. Well, Peyton Thorne, we all know what happened in 2021. 15 transfer portal guys came in to Michigan State. Uh, Kenneth Walker the third uh, running back was a huge difference maker coming out of Wake Forest. Arlington, Tennessee, Shelby County, where I'm from, that's where he came from out of high school. But last year, you're right. I absolutely believe what you said. It was causal. Peyton Thorne's running for his life. Let's talk about that wide receiver room at Auburn. Not just the kids that Auburn signed out of high school this year, but Robert Lewis and Samuel L.V. Jackson the fifth, who was a quarterback at Cal last year. I yep. like I like his maturity. I like his brain. He he goes. It's 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 I catch on pretty quickly because I understand how to you know work a playbook and all as a quarterback. But that receiver room, and not to mention the running back room where Auburn's got a lot of depth, is another reason for optimism. Yeah, Lewis, uh, and I don't – Jason Caldwell will give your listeners a more detailed, granular peek at each of these players you name. But I do know a couple of things that fascinate me about Lewis, that he is proving to have the leadership uh, chops when when they're, you know, c- competing in scrimmages to the point where he will – tell it, go over to the wide receivers coach or offensive coordinator and tell them, hey, I saw this, what do you think? And that, to have a guy like that with some maturity from actual games played at Georgia Tech, which is respectable, that's ACC yeah. as plays real football. Uh, and then you mentioned um, Samuel Jackson. He's a fascinating player because he's just a freak athletically. And as some will know, not everyone, he was a high school teammate of yep. Peyton Thorne. And I don't think that ever hurts <clears throat> as long as they got along. One of them didn't steal the other's girlfriend or something. Uh, then, then uh, you like that, and he is—he's turning heads um, at, at that receiver position. And I, I wouldn't be shocked as the season progresses. You might see a guy like Jackson get uh, get an opportunity at return or punt or kickoff return. And uh, I can't believe Rob, you hadn't talked about the deepest, best field goal kicker room in the country at Auburn University. <laughs> Hey, Towns Magoo is. Are you kidding? On, what a, what Mr. A Magoo. <laughs> Mr. Magoo. I mean, he's lifelong dream kid lives from Auburn High School. And ironically, uh, McPherson is out with like a hamstring injury. So they said, well, you just recover. You were 13 of 13 last year. I don't know what else we could ask you to do. Um, and Towns Magoo comes in. Nobody has a deeper kicking room than Auburn. I'm talking about field goal kickers, not to mention Oscar Chapman in his 12th year at Auburn as the punter. Yeah, and you know, let me tip my hat to Coach Saban, which we'll continue to do for years to come, won't we? Um, yeah. But he's he adapts. And I think for a period of his early tenure at Alabama, and they were certainly winning big starting in 09, and, and they didn't slow down much after that, um, a bad season became one loss, one one or two critical losses. Yeah. But um, and we should all be so lucky. But he he it seemed that he would do the walk on tryouts approach to to place kicking, and uh, you know you you figure out as a head coach at some point. You know what? We're in the SEC. I don't care how stacked our roster is. We're probably going to be playing in some down to the wire games. Putting it mildly, that <laughs> kick six game was down to the wire and a, a, a kicker that had Towns Magoo's leg, maybe that 57 yarder goes through and we never get to talk about a kick six game. But yeah. um, I noticed that Saban started burning a scholarship uh, to bring the most elite kickers in. And they had one last year for sure. Um, that, so I think with your Auburn, when we have been in a position of having to play more close games in the league, in the league than not, I think you almost have to go out and make sure you've got a great field goal kicker who you a you can rely on inside fifty, and ideally you he's got a fifty fifty shot from fifty yard fifty five out to sixty yards and that Magoo kick to win the A day scrimmage, um, people there said it had a chance from maybe sixty eight yards. Yeah, and how, Doug, I'm curious, and you could probably ask someone who does physics and mechanical engineering or something but how are we getting these kicks further and further 
I mean, 63, 64, Tom Dempsey, that mark stood for a long, long time. But you're seeing this more and more. And Will Reichard at Alabama finished his career as the SEC's all-time leading scorer. He passed former Auburn kicker Daniel Carlson to do that. But you're right. I just don't understand why every school doesn't devote a scholarship or two to the kicking game. It's a third of every game. Yeah, you know, how are we – how is it getting – you know, the equipment hadn't really changed. I don't think yeah. they're inflating the balls harder for a kicker. If that's going on, they'll eventually report it and figure it out and maybe enforce something. I don't think that's wor- at work at all. Mm-hmm. I must I must conclude that the great game of soccer is developing the leg speed and just the, the form and physical impact. It's like club head speed when you're playing golf, I'm sure. And so I think these the really elite kickers, and there's not 30 of them. Usually no. there's less than five or ten every year. Maybe Brendan can report on that here too. But they there's some of them that you it's not hard to find out what are what are they averaging their ability to kick. Put them on the practice field and see what it looks like. And then the the ones that besides leg strength, the ones that really command the NIL dollars and eventually NFL draft are those who can consistently kick it pretty straight and not have the, the yips like you see with some kickers. Yeah, you know, and maybe maybe they're going to places like the Vitamin Shop, one of our sponsors in Olive Branch, <laughs> of Oxford, Mississippi, and getting probiotics and uh, pre-workout supplements and all like shot blocks and goo. And, you know, they, they really are two great locations. Check them out on the screen. There you are, open Monday through Saturday, 9.30 a.m. to 8 p.m., uh, Sundays, 10.30 a.m. to 7 p.m. And there's something going on, Doug, in, in, in college football that I see right now. And with in, in your thoughts, you, you look at defense. Look, DJ Durkin at Auburn, what do you like in a coordinator? One who teaches wait and react or – just be instinctive because we've drilled it down in your heads every day in practice. Because I, well, I like what I'm seeing out of Durkin. Well, what what the book on Durkin coming out of practice is, if he had any eligibility, Rob, he yeah. could probably give you a snap or two. He is in yeah. great physical shape. He's younger than people realize. And he is at practice. He is running full sprint and, and playing wide receiver to teach his concepts so he's very physical, very energetic, active. Uh, uh, he he is not shy about getting in the face of a player who is repeatedly not listening, not playing his assignment. And I think, you know, that how you coach players, I think nowadays coaches have to adjust. It's not one size fits all. They have to get to know their players, communicate one-on-one, observe them. And some can take tough coaching and you give them that. Some you have to take a little different approach so they don't get disheartened and lose their, their confidence. But I think between Durkin and that whole defensive brain trust, uh, Hugh Freeze is not going to have to worry about that side of the ball except in big games. If somebody says, I think I'll only rush two on this f- fourth and 31, Hugh will probably intervene. <laughs> yeah, and and you know what? I, I, I agree with you about Durkin. There are two kinds of coaches. The ones that stand back and watch are the ones that get down in the grass. That's DJ Durkin. And also, you've got to spend more time now to with your players as much as you can so it's harder for them to leave you. You know, I heard that great quote last week, Doug, uh, about from Oliver White, uh, a thousand cast. The, the, the risk of loving something so much is that you could lose it. But you've got your players there, and, and, and with, with – Every day in practice, obviously you're spending a lot of time with them, but off off the field after practice, think about the great co- like in business in your business, you deal with a lot of employees. You get to know them. It's harder to tell your boss you're leaving when you're close to them. You know, if you don't know them, I think it's easy. I like what you said about DJ Durkin, and another one that I've watched since high school. He was at Brentwood Academy is Kent Austin. I think that that's not getting enough attention. And Derek Nix, what does Freeze say? We put the band back together. Led Zeppelin turned down $800 million. Freeze did it for less than $5 million. You know, it, to me, it's not, not that Philip Montgomery or Roberts were bad coordinators last year. Yeah. They both have good resumes and did some nice things as the season progressed. And 
we need to remi- remember that there was a lot of just reclamation and cleanup of bad habits and having guys in there that transferred in the portal that really didn't give a crap. And so that, how do you adjust for that probably accounts for the New Mexico <clears throat> state loss along with you taking yeah. his off the ball recruiting instead of game planning. But I think now the word I hear from people like Jason Caldwell and others who are there all the time is that Freeze appears to be extremely comfortable with his brain trust on both yeah. sides of the ball. And I think that he, the fact that he spent so much time hand in glove with Derek Nix at Ole Miss, and as you said, Ken Austin will fit right in with those guys. Uh, I'm excited to see the, how big a step this offense can make because – I don't, except for the question marks about Peyton Thorne, which are legit, I don't feel worried really about any other position group on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, and and like we talked about the offensive line, you you know, Connor Liu is going to be a name people will remember for a long time. And you you knew it from the start. And then you're moving some guys around, Dylan Wade, uh, Azavian Miller. I I like – I like the big guy Ellis from Mississippi State. Why? Why? You know, hey, every year I had a new coach. I figured, why not go to a better program, as he said. But that that part on the offensive line—that's the best thing. If you're an Auburn follower fan, is the offensive line because without it, Doug, nothing happens. Yeah, yeah you know, there were there were. Uh, it's hard to remember and hard to believe that the production we got out of Connor Lewis at the center position yet last year, yeah. once he took over that he was a true freshman. So imagine the step he can make as a leader and physically this year. Yeah. And again, <laughs> we appear to be too de- de- under, under, under appreciated Rob and Brendan with this Auburn O line is that Auburn is signing and recruiting tackles. Oh, yeah. plenty. <laughs> we went it's as if we wandered through the desert under Gus for five or 10 years unable to sign a tackle and we'd have guards trying to play tackle and you need long yeah. length and good feet to play it. So if you can load up on tackles, the ones that don't work out end up making great guards. So it's a, I think we're too legitimately too deep. And if you have a couple of injuries, uh, there won't be abject panic down on the planes. Yeah. It, it, and, and, and Brendan, you know, we're, we're talking about, and you heard me Doug earlier in the show, I was listening to Allie Peak Wilbur, who does a great podcast on Florida, and she's on the Buddy Martin show, and I've had her on. This this she's mentality, on U- YouTube as well. If you check, her yeah, out. He's great. yeah. This mentality of you know the coaches and a lot of this tough guy Gordon Gecko talk. You know, ah, you know, two years in, get rid of him. It's 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 <laughs> absolute nonsense. How, how many young doctors come into their profession, and it takes a long time to? I was with a ninety two year old doctor. In a Little Rock, at a meeting the other day, and uh, he goes, I- "I'm ashamed to admit I'm in medicine with the way these young people today they don't understand the commitment." Well, somebody's got to, but see, someone like him can take the time to teach them what it takes. I-, I think, I think we're crazy what we're doing with coaches nowadays, aren't we? Yeah, we are, um, and you know, pivoting from football, I- I- it's not that Mark Pope who's a proud Kentucky Wildcat alum, <laughs> may not turn out to be the next Danny Hurley for all I know. Yeah. But you have to be objective if you're a Wildcat fan, and most fans won't be objective, including Auburn, Alabama, you name it. But there is nothing on paper since Mark Pope has been coaching to pretend that he's going to mop the floor with everybody. He has not, he has not won a single – March Madness game. He's only taken BYU to the tournament twice, bowing out in the first round. And of course, an Auburn fan should not be too hard on that point after a few weeks ago losing to Yale. But it's just be careful, fans, what you ask for, wanting change at the top. Because when you start introducing disruption and you think you're going to get Billy Donovan, you think just because you're Kentucky, you're going to get the next coming of of Danny Hurley or, or coach K it, there's no guarantees. And there's a lot of reasons the best coaches want no part of college right now. And we rant about it to the point of being sick of it, that the, the behavioral and attitudinal change of NIL and the portal is difficult to manage. It, it, it really is. And look, Doug, stay on with us. If you can, this is great stuff. I want to, and, and Brendan, you know, Florida had their spring game over the weekend, big crowd out there. 
What's that telling you? Uh, well, you know, I was just sitting here as Doug's talking and I'm thinking about how, you know, as Florida has lived, you know, through this for the last decade, uh, you know, since Dan Mullen and, you know, on and on and on, uh, you know, it, it, it's been, you know, the coaching carousel is awful and, you know, uh, you know, having to navigate what they have to navigate now is, you know, probably next to impossible in a lot of ways. And I think as a lot of coaches say, it takes a lot of luck for it to, uh, you know, sort of transpire, but seeing 48 K in the swamp, you know, which is, I, I, I'm almost hundred percent sure that's the most ever for a spring game in the swamp means that people are still excited and the fan base is still there after this decade, you know, that it's, you know, and they're excited about Billy Napier. Yeah. And they're excited. I think a lot of people wanted to see DJ Lagway, uh, who kind of flipped the switch, you know, during the game. And I'm sure Franz will talk more about it as I see him popping in right now. Uh, we'll bring in Mr. Franz Beard. But but uh, hello, Franz. How are you? Just uh, talking about spring Gators. Why don't you? Uh, I was giving a quick analysis of, of of what DJ Lagway did and 48K in the swamp. Isn't that the most that's ever been in, Francis? No, it is not. Um, we had uh, Urban Meyer's first year there. We had something like 55,000 is what they yeah. had. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I read that yesterday. Yeah. It, let me, let me say something. Wrong. Yeah, Doug, Doug, one more thing. When you think, what was the crowd at Auburn's A-Day game this year? I still hadn't seen it. You know, I don't. I didn't get a count. I, I know that it was uh, underwhelming. And, yeah. and honestly, that doesn't bother me much. I, no. I do. I tip my hat to the Gator fans who they're not coming off some national championship and showing up in droves like that. So that that speaks well of that fan base. Unless they brought the, the rapper Eminem or something that in there for a concert, and that <laughs> yeah. that explains the count, the seat count. I, I'm playing with y'all, Brendan. But no, I I think the A Day games are going the way of the dinosaur unless they reimagine how yeah. to make it far more interesting than it currently is. Yeah, and Doug, look, thank you so much for taking time. And I think that's going to be by playing other teams in a real game in the spring. Thank you so much. Uh, friends, that's where we're going. Uh, and Doug made a good point, spring practice, these 8A games and these big spring events that, that you've got. Uh, basically, it's not about getting better. It's about just uh, not getting injured. And that's tough. Uh, that, that's very tough because – you know, you've got – I know at Auburn, they start in late February. They go all of March, and they had their spring game April the 6th, I think it was. Yeah, April 6th. So that's a lot of time to be spent. And, you know, they're really just – people don't know. If you want a big spring crowd, the coach has got to get out there and just implore the people to come. But what, what were the takeaways from the Gator spring game? Well, uh, uh, now they ran purely vanilla. It was it was pure blue bell, blue bell, natural vanilla uh, on the defense. No, no blitzing, no nothing. Uh, the first team offensive line is going to be really good. They the second team offensive line will be better when uh, Austin Barber and Cam Waits are healthy. They were not healthy Saturday. Uh, but I will say this, the young kids, Caden Westfall, I mean, um, uh, Fletcher Westfall, Caden Jones are going to be good tackles. I think Florida is going to go into the portal tomorrow and try to pick up an interior offensive lineman, like a big moose who can really play guard and can play either guard, uh, and have that experienced guy, uh, offensively. Uh, Eugene, <laughs> oh my gosh, Trey, they, Florida has got, I think the future, uh, all American wide receiver that we have not had here since, uh, the last one we had was a guy named Percy. He was, it was pretty good. Yeah. Trey, Trey Wilson is the real deal. As Brendan can tell you, the, they last year he did not have spring, so he got here in the summer. He's learning on the offense on the fly, 
mostly drag patterns, mostly little dump passes, tunnel screens, easy stuff. He knows the offense now, and he has, and he showed it the other day. Eight catches, 128 yards, caught a 60-yard touchdown pass from Graham Mertz. That was a thing of beauty, as Brendan can uh, um, affirm. I mean, it, it, it was. He made he made a move. I mean, he just broke the corner's ankles. Just makes his move. Boom, gets wide yeah. open. Easy. Brands, how much of that is uh, is Gonzalez? You know, like how much of that is really good coaching because we've been talking about really good coaching recently but uh and, you know you feel like that that's just you know taking really good talent and molding them because he was i mean we all knew he was good but damn that was good billy gonzalez is the best coach in the country for teaching route running I agree. precision you watch him in practice rob and he'll get on these guys he says that is nine steps, not eight and a half, mm-hmm. yeah. not ten. Yeah. And and because he understands the offense that if you run the route with precision, good things will happen. Yes. If you don't run the route with precision, dumb things happen. Uh, Mertz threw a, a pick uh, only because uh, Jameer DK fell down. Otherwise, that's a that is a great throw into tight coverage and it's a it's a catch well yeah. let me ask you that friends too sorry to interrupt but uh how much of that is billy napier pushing Mertz to start you know making that decision instead of holding on less of a clean game more of uh you know more, more of calculated a risk fly. Is, calculated risk is what graham calls it and what it is is Confident, it, it's a, it's a matter of confidence. Confidence in himself to make the throw, and confidence that he's got the guy. The, now he made throws into tight coverage last year, but the thing about it is, the only time he he dared do it is when it was Ricky Pearsall on the other end, because he had to trust that receiver too. You have to have that confidence that the receiver will make the catch in a tight window. And uh, how many guys have we seen over the years? And, and the three of us have seen a pretty good bit of football. Mm-hmm. But we see that guy that, that he sees that safety coming, and all of a sudden his hands kind of widen a little bit instead of tighten up around the football, et cetera, like that. Yeah. Uh, it, it, things like that were, were uh, prevalent, let's just say, it, last year, except when Ricky Pearsall had the foot, uh, was the receiver. You can tell that Graham's got confidence in his receivers. DK's going to be really good. I predict I predict this. We're going to have uh, five wide receivers actively engaged in, in the rotation, and that is um, obviously Trey Wilson, number one. Uh, number two, Chimera DK. Uh, Khalil Jackson will be there. Marcus Burke is going to be really, really good. He made a catch, shoe tops that I I didn't. He, a year ago, he wouldn't have tried to make it, but this time he's making it. it reminded me, of, you know, what it reminded me of guys, the the immaculate reception by Franco Harris, running at full speed, reaching down, catching the ball at ankle ankle high, and still going instead of diving down and trying to catch the ball. Had Marcus Burke tried to go down on the ground to catch the ball, it would have been about a 50-50 chance that he catches it, but that's the end of it. But this time, by catching it and showing that he can, showing the good hands, catching it and never losing stride, it ends up being about a 45-yard play. Well, Let me ask you about Lagway. The Texas quarterbacks in a typical year out of 133 Division I football programs, you might see – 20 or more Texas high school quarterbacks. And Lagway's a big guy. What does he do? What did, what did y'all see out of him that you know in the spring that makes you think he could come in and be a compliment to what uh, Graham Mertz is doing? Well, here's the thing that he he holds the ball too long. 
He got yeah. he was sacked six. He had, it was accredited with six sacks, but some of that was the second team offensive line. But I think probably four of the six had to do with him holding the football too long, which is typical of a freshman. He's looking at coverages he's never seen. Now, he does throw off his front foot, too. So the ball's going to sail on him occasionally. But the thing you got to admire about him is the ball comes from here to there like that. I mean, it is like quick release. It's like a second baseman on a double play. Yeah, okay. Ball comes there, boom, yeah. it's gone. Um, he's better right now throwing the ball on the roll because when he's throwing the ball on a rollout, he does he doesn't have the ball doesn't sail on him. I, when he's throwing the ball uh, in the pocket, he's gonna he throws it a lot off his front foot. All right, let me let me throw one at you too, friends. Here's another one for both of you. You talk about pop time. You know, the, the time it takes for the catcher to throw the ball to second base. You know, 1.6 is probably considered to be really good. You talk about his he holds the ball too long. Is that mainly because it's taking him – he's adjusting right now to the speed of the college game versus what he saw in high school, albeit he saw some great high school football out in Texas. He put out more D1 players than any state in the country, 400-plus, but – I, I would think it's more of a learning curve in it because this guy looks like he has everything. But again, oh. when you get there as a freshman, everything's going by real fast, isn't it? Oh, he he's has, he learns very very fast. But I got to tell you guys, this kid this kid still has a way to go as far as understanding defenses. Graham Mertz, who Billy Gonzalez says is one of the smartest football players he's ever been around now think about some of the players that billy gonzalez has been around think about some of the wide receivers he's coached over the years like odell beckham and landry at lsu yeah. like uh this percy guy who was pretty good at florida wouldn't you say yeah. out of virginia um, beach yeah so he has coached some really good ball players yeah and billy's had a good billy's had a really good career yeah. Well, Billy uh, says that Graham Mertz is one of the smartest guys he's ever been around in football. And it took Graham Mertz. Brendan, wouldn't you say into the sixth or seventh game last year yeah. before you looked at him and he was really comfortable? Uh, uh, I, I would say game six, same seven games. You see him come around, uh, you know, yeah, I, I think so. How many games did Mertz started? 27 games at Wisconsin? 32. Before? Okay, 32. So, again, I know they play good football in the Big Ten. I'm not going to say they don't. They've got the national champion. Michigan does. But if you want to break it down in detail, they typically, their skill players, a lot of their best athletes are from the southern footprint. Always have been. But I just think that was the adjustment part of it. And, you know, and, and I look at the SEC, let's kind of bounce around and look. Who saw Missouri coming last year like what, what, what they did, winning 11 games? And I, we've got to get past this, but here's the conversation that we have right now when teams win bowl games. Yeah, they beat Ohio State, but I don't give a damn if a bunch of Ohio State guys quit their team and went to other schools. Missouri still dominated that game 14-3, 14-6, something like that. Uh, now you're bringing in, you know, Chip Kelly up there. Good luck on that. Good luck trying to run that offense in the Big Ten, just like it didn't work in the NFL, despite us being told he was going to rewrite uh, and, and make Bill Belichick look obsolete. If you can't run between the tackles in the NFL as a running back, you can't run. But let's let's think about what's going on in the SEC. Who do you see? We don't have divisions anymore, but for simpleness uh, on this show, let's let's still use divisions. And I'll put, well, I would say I'd put Missouri because Missouri and Texas are definitely in the West. But who are some teams that you think are going to make another big jump this year that most people aren't talking about yet? I think Florida is going to shock everybody how good they are. Uh, the schedule, if you look at it, 
Florida, the, the only game that I think is really going to be a toss-up game, of their first six, is Tennessee. And we don't know yet how good Tennessee is going to be. Uh, I think Tennessee, uh, with Josh Heupel, is going to be another eight and four team. I think it's, I just think that Josh Heupel, um, I think he had lightning in a bottle that first year, uh, kind of like he had when he was at UCF that first year. Got to remember, he went undefeated into the Fiasco Bowl where he got to play LSU, and they lost barely. And then the next year, all of a sudden, boom, 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 downward. Yeah. This is year three, and if it, if the trend follows, which I think it will, there'll be another eight and four team. Uh, Kentucky has real issues. Uh, Brock Vandegrift, as talented as he may seem in yeah. on the scout team, he has yet to play significant snaps. No, uh, really. Vanderbilt, yeah. Vanderbilt's quarterback situation is is such that Wit Muschamp could be in the rotation. Does that name sound familiar? Yes. Will's son. <laughs> Will's son, exactly. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, could, could, That's he's, crazy. The, he's the youngest of, 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 the, of them. Uh, but South Carolina, disaster this year. Um, let's go Mississippi State. Uh, they did pick up running back with 1,200 yards yesterday. Uh, they're going to be better. They're going to be better than they were last year, but still, I get Ole Miss is going to. Ole Miss could win it all. Georgia could win it all. Alabama, uh, it's still Alabama. I don't care what anybody says. Yeah. I think. Yeah. I think. I think Hugh Freeze is going to have Auburn on the right track. I know you're still mad at him, Rob. That's okay. You can still be mad. I'm not mad. I'm not yes, mad. I just are. have a little PT, PT, PTSD. From you have it. You're too. mad. You're oh, mad. I'm mad as hell. No. I, I, here's the deal. I, I still, whoever signed off on that, and it's always on the head coach, you, you gave the game to Bama. And that's two straight iron bowls for Auburn. You've got to learn how to close out in football. But but I, I, I do think, Freeze, I, I'm, look, I am for my school before I'm for any coach because that school is the one constant that will always be there. And, and and I tell you, friends, I love what you're doing. Keep rolling because you're talking about that Vandy situation. I don't know if the Skinner box will be complete or not. That's what my wife, B.F. Skinner, the great behavioral psychologist, that's what she called Vanderbilt's 26,000-seat stadium last year. It took us 45 minutes to get out of there after the Auburn game. <laughs> B.F. Skinner. You remember, friends? You Ring know the him. bell. Oh, no, that's Pavlov. Pavlov's, Pavlov's dog. dog. Yeah, I got yeah. the wrong one. Friends, <laughs> friends, Freudian slip. Pop, no, that's wrong. Fra friends has got the shadow over him today. Looks like he's in the witness protection. I, <laughs> I am. I am, guys. I got greasy yeah, thing. You, you got your lenses greasy. I love Perry Mason. Friends is the man. By oh, the yeah. way, Brendan's too young to know this, but know. Franz will know it. Uh, how many cases did Perry Mason ever lose on uh, the Perry Mason show? Zero. Uh, one. He, lost he lost one. And it was overturned by Hamilton Berger, the DA. It was overturned. So Hamilton Berger was winless against Perry Mason. Uh, do by you the hear way, that sound, Rob? That's the sound of everyone switching the channel. Uh, uh, come on. <laughs> but I'm just saying. Yeah. But I love uh, Perry I, I Mason, the viewer. It, well, here's the thing. He's good about guy. Auburn, and, and and I'm going to make one more comment about you, Rob, and it's because I love you. <laughs> you are so you are so Auburn because it Auburn could go one and eleven, but it's a successful season if you beat Alabama. <laughs> it, I mean, good luck, dude. Good luck if you're one and eleven, one in ten, and you get that win. <laughs> but if you did, forget yeah. the other ten losses. Being yeah. Alabama is what counts. Yeah, and yeah. that's the way it is with Alabama fans. You, baseball, you could get baseball. You could go, you could go six, six and fifty-five. But as long as two of those wins were, or three of those wins were in the weekend series with Alabama. Yeah, 
it was a successful season. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, 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 the thing is, and, and it's with that way with all these schools. You know, living in Memphis, you talk about a melting pot. Uh, in a couple a couple of weeks from today, uh, Paul Feinbaum's going to be coming to speak to the Touchdown Club of Memphis. They have a spring speaker series. It's going to be great. They're going to have Greg McElroy, Cole Kubelik, uh, Paul Feinbaum, some other really good speakers. Um, it, it, it it's something really cool about this time of year. I like Easy Boys. That's the name. Perry Mason is a great name. By the way, the follow up Ironsides wasn't bad either. Um, friends, I got to ask you now about Texas A and M. Um, Casey Goodjohn watches this show every day out in Claiborne, Texas. Uh, Aggie fan. I know a lot of Aggies. Love their fans, love their spirit. Don't understand those cheers. I, I just don't understand them. They're mystic. Yeah, they are. They're mystic. But they're loyal and they're passionate. Mike Elko, the words you hear about him more than any other are the phrase, the term, the descriptive adjective is he's really a smart guy. Let's talk about what you see happening out in College Station this year with A&M. Uh Somewhere between six and six and eight and four. Uh, they're going to be what they were going to be with Jimbo. I mean, Jimbo would have had them seven, five, six, six, seven, five, eight, four. Yeah. Mike Elko is going to have them six, six, seven, five, eight, four. Count on it. Uh, a yeah. lot of talent. Uh, you know, Mike Elko's a smart guy. Jimbo Fisher may talk like a hick. But the boy is brilliant. I mean, how how dumb can you be to walk away with seventy seven million dollars to be paid not to coach? Yeah, not you cannot not be a, you cannot not be bad. dumb and walk away with seventy seven million. I realize that that's not quite as much as you're paying Brendan. I mean, it's close, but not yeah, quite, well, not 70, quite as much. Seventy eight. So I yeah, know more. We bumped it up. Right. Uh, yeah, I wear the ascot, but but it's, it's crazy, friend. Friends, it's, you're, the you're right. it's the incentive bonus, Brendan. Yeah, yeah I well, he if he said I get more if I wear an ascot, so yeah, I an just, ascot. I it. Yeah, he says a bonus. Wears, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, I, and, I've and, ordered or it. Or he wears his Hewlett and Dunn boot and clothing cup. I did wear that on one. the historic square, the nightcap shirt, which is I think that's a Jack Daniels bottle with a with a, with a nice it shot is. glass. But let, let's let's but think like about. It. I do too. I love it, and 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 I'm gonna throw, throw another one, friends. You need a hat, Te- though. Texas A&M. You do need a cowboy hat. T- Texas A&M. Jimbo Fisher is a. We, we, I, I don't think he's a bad coach. I, I know. No. I watched him since he was about 27 when he came to Auburn from Sanford with Terry Bowden. He can flat out recruit, and he can coach the position. I I just honestly, and I'm always honest. I don't ever say something just to curry favor with people. You can't You're give somebody a, a guaranteed $75 million contract and that not affect them mentally. That's why I say this all the time. Incentive-based trust, age-banded trust, that's the only way you're going to make NIL work. All right, friends, Texas and Oklahoma. We're going to – Buddy and I had a special guest who's a regular on the show on Fridays, Ken Caps, great writer out in Texas, Football Writers Association of America, talking about Texas – and a lot of things you may or may not know about Texas. And Brendan, you know, in that 30 minutes that we did it in, we, we barely scratched the surface. There's so much to talk about with them. Oh. Texas and Oklahoma, guys. Which of those two? I think it's Texas. Do you think, Franz, is most, you know, prepared to come into the SEC and win a bunch of games from the get-go, as they say down in Alachua County? Alachua. Texas will Alachua. be – Texas will be a national championship contender this year. Yeah. I think we've had, I think personally that we have three for sure contenders in the SEC Texas, Georgia, and Ole Miss. Ole Miss do yeah. not, anybody who is, who is short selling Ole Miss is nuts. Lane yeah. has got it going and you got to love a guy that instead of a spring game has a hot <laughs> dog eating contest, a, a dunk contest, coaches, tug of wars, etc. He made it fun for everybody. It was an experience that people love. Well, now that'll either be awesome 
or that'll come back and bite them in the ass. It's It'll like be one awesome. Of those things. I love it. Yeah, I know. I think it's awesome now, but I'm saying if he goes out and you know, you know, does a not so good uh, season, they'll be like, "Well, look, he didn't even take it seriously at the spring game." Uh, but but here's the reason: is they had, he said, "We're going to have a serious practice on Friday." They had a scrimmage. Okay. Yeah. I mean, they had they had an all out scrimmage, and Saturday, uh, they just had fun. Um, yeah. So, well, you know, friends, uh, you were making some great comments last night. I, I just, I, I like, I like going back and forth with you because it's fun. Because we text all the time, and you're cerebral like Doug Dean. Both of y'all are, uh, and I like it, friends. Don't you think our tackling was better than it's been in five years? Yeah. yeah. See, those are the kind of what I love about our audience, and I cannot tell you, Brendan and I and friends. And, and Buddy, I'm going to be on Buddy's show tonight. Thank you so much for inviting me on there. Love interacting with all these fans because I'm one of them, okay? Uh, and I was I was texting yesterday uh, with a friend about going out, you know, to media days in Dallas, <laughs> July yeah, 15th to the 18th. Hey. Can we get that in the budget, please? Yeah, we got to make I want to go that. with you and friends. Yeah, it's going to be fun. It is, and, and Brendan, friends think would agree. There's going to be this giant billboard on I-20 when you come into yeah. Dallas. It says in orange and white, Texas welcomes the SEC. In the bottom right hand corner, it'll be the SEC logo. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be, it's gonna be fun out there. But I'm gonna tell you, I spend a lot of time in a lot of these different schools. We're gonna be doing the show the first weekend of October for the Tennessee Arkansas game up in Fayetteville. Um, Jim McClellan and his wife Pat want us to come up there, and and who, who we were with them in Little Rock last week to meet with them and some people. Really looking forward to going to these. I love going to these different campuses. Well, Folks, I, I I have an idea for you, Rob. Yes, sir. I think you. We should we should all sit down and have a bucket list of the SEC schools. You know who knows what's going to happen to the. They're SEC. all they're all so, worthy. So, so all like worthy. the Tennessee Navy to yeah. you know the Grove. Like like you should go around. We should have video of you experiencing. You know all the different things uh, at these different schools, right? Well, so you know I, what? And we'll make make YouTube videos at it. Yeah, I it's, think but be great. It, it it's so much fun. I remember the night after I grad, maybe no, the night I graduated. No, the night after I graduated from Auburn, driving through Gainesville on the way down to Clearwater, one of my fraternity brothers' house from Auburn, and we went fishing out in the Keys. Went out to Key West, and uh, his brother was assistant DA in Pinellas County. That was that was a wild, wild. By the way, folks, you got to understand Gator culture. And I, I don't know, y'all forgotten more than I know. I've spent a lot of time in Florida, mainly the Panhandle, LA. But God, when you get on Alligator Alley, don't run out of gas. <laughs> I mean, this is, you are you are in big trouble friends but, you'll attest to this i, I will God. if you actually run out of gas in florida <clears throat> now in 75 the turnpike whatever it may be if you have car trouble which i did this week and go into still a soccer game not run out of gas had car trouble road ragers is free and they will come and give you gas they will fix your car they'll or sort like and that's and, and it's like i think star three six i mean they're there in like five minutes they, wow. pull up at a they will deal. change your tire, change your tire. Like it's sponsored by state farm. I have no association to the show, but it like, but, but I'm telling you no matter what friends, right. It's, it is the greatest free service in, ever. And they're there in like five minutes. Now I got to yeah. tell you guys <clears throat> a story and Brendan can attest that uh, this is true. Uh, we, um, uh, somehow or another on, in 2008 on our way we're going to Knoxville. We stay in Atlanta because of the fact that that it's just we're but it's me, we're you, at, buddy, and our photographer, Mark, right? Mark, Mark McLeod, Tim Casey, yeah. John Fenneran, and Tim me. Casey. Oh. All of us, all of us, loaded up in, in a van. We stay in it. We're going to stay in Atlanta. Get up the next day. Drive up to Atlanta. I mean, drive up to Knoxville, come back that same night, do a show in our hotel at the Hilton. What year is or, this? This is 2008. Yeah, 2008. So we're doing live streaming shows in 2008, audio yeah. only, 
off hotel Wi-Fi inside the business rooms. If we can get the, I would literally pirate the internet out of the, the run cables out of the windows so we could get enough to stream a live show back to our website. Let me tell you, nobody was doing that. Nobody. No, we get up somehow or another. We wind up in deliverance country. We oh did. We did. We 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 are we are t we are back roading it, and it was by total accident. Because Carmen's they, like recalculating, recalculating, <laughs> recalculating, <laughs> and <laughs> syntax anyway, error. Anyway, uh, Brendan makes a U turn, hits a curb, and we have a flat tire. Before we can even get out of the car, hardly. Up walks this guy whose car is in basic bondo. The doors dun, dun, held dun, dun, together dun, 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 dun. with bungee. I'm yeah. not kidding you. And he says, I'll change that tar. I'll change and, that tar for you. I'm going to join for it. He, didn't, he had an upper <clears throat> register <clears throat> sort of missing tooth sort of voice. Or oh, yeah. Four, heavens, yeah. Uh, he had four teeth, Brandon. Come on, give, uh, give the boy credit. He'd done good dental work. He had that, you're up in Cleveland and Ella J in North Georgia up near the Chattooga River. Oh, we, no. We, 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 we're, wait, Cleveland's going to be in this picture, but here we are. <laughs> we we come, uh, only got to know where, Lake, I know where Lake Placid is. Lake Placid is where, is was, where uh, I know where it is too. Dana Kirk was from. Anyway, uh, we we get in there and, and there and, and this is on the river where deliverance was was filmed Chituga. the guy changes our tire and we say we got to have a tire cuz all we have is the donut the guy says come on down to bubba's place bubba's yeah. place so we follow him we go in the car and they have the car is still running they got the jack underneath it and this guy's got a cigarette that's got an ash this long hanging. Yeah, like a big pink it. Floyd ash. Just uh, like and, and like it's talent that he just keeps that thing balanced as you're just watching it. Like he just and, mesmerizes and, and the car is still it. running. Yeah. The car is still running. We're still in the car and he's gonna change it. Yeah. And all of a sudden he gets a jack out there and he looks and says, I ain't got no tires that fit your van. Hey, you're lucky you lived. Uh, wait, wait, it gets well, better. Yeah. We then drive to uh, follow the river to Cleveland, where we get the tire changed yes. in Cleveland, make it up to Tennessee in time for the game. Okay, Barely. We are there in time for the game. We get out of the car and we go walking as a group. And I mean, we have ourselves a group and Brendan's carrying equipment. Brendan... <laughs> Brendan looks like a Sherpa. Version. He's got he's loaded up with stuff. I know he's that feeling. Back. He's oh. Brendan's the only guy that I know that has a backpack that sits in the front and he has one on the back <laughs> and he's carrying gear. Yeah. And, with a tripod on my shoulder. And, and this guy, this guy looks at us and, and he says, Y'all from Florida? Wait, wait. Yes, we are. Yeah. And he says, Can we trade coaches with you? That was Philip Fulmer's last year. Last yeah, year. Oh, oh, eight was yeah a fateful year, and I, I mean, and and but there's nothing. The road trips are worthy of of, of stories themselves. I mean, that we've all been on. That, that's what I love, and I like. Now look, Perry well, Mason. It, LA. Yeah, it is. But when you're sitting there, when they're sitting there in the back seats, the media road trips are a little different because they're back there clacking away. Yeah. You know, as we're trying to like to send stories off, you know, in 2008 with crap internet through the backseat of a, of a van, you know, so that's like, almost in so it's not like we're like stopping and we had a crazy party and we did this and that and all that. Like, we're literally like, you know, trying to get to and from and report and all that stuff. So, so like, we get done with those things, it's like you're maxed. You're done. Well, you, you are. And, and, and they now look, Perry, I agree. LA, lower Alabama, it's not Florida. I, I mean, I'm talking about, I, I love the state of Florida. I've been from, you know, Pensacola yes. down to Key West and in between. I've Pensacola's been, not in Florida. I know, but but I'm saying when you, you once you get over, I guess you turn where the big, I've got some clients in Spring Hill, Florida, and uh, that's not too far from the Steenhatchee River. I've had several clients that lived on the Steenhatchee River, which is a spring-fed river. One yeah, thing, you go scalloping there every year. I've been. Well, well, what's cool about Florida, people don't realize, is it's one of the top five cattle producing states in America. People yep. forget about the University of Florida College of Agriculture. 
It's a big damn. It's a big, damn, it's a big damn deal. Like the one at Auburn where they eradicated the boll weevil. But mm-hmm. also, Auburn also gets credit, much to their chagrin, for introducing kudzu for erosion control. But not too bad. <laughs> it's part of the uh, state flag in Mississippi, kudzu. But what I love is people don't realize when University of Florida fans rank and file are no different than fans in these other SEC schools. They're not all from Naples and West Palm Beach and all. There's some, but they are as red blooded, red meat and potatoes as it gets. I've, I've just that's my take because I've I've been to games down there, but I've seen them at road games all over the place. What you're seeing in the SEC now is kind of a a reset and we're going to fix this guys i I think the 55 44 thousand or whatever at the swamp saturday i think it's a sign that they want this thing to work with billy napier and and if if the only thing you can say about a coach is he's not that charismatic well do recruits like his pitch if they do that's all that matters exactly i mean i'm looking at it so Look at look at Bobby Petrino and Sam Pittman at, at Arkansas. Okay, well, Petrino, if he's successful, they all stay. I think Sam Pittman, I talked to some Arkansas guys last year that were telling me kind of, well, he's done a good job, and he is, uh, he is you know, stabilizing Florida, but, you know, I'm not sure if he's going to be able to take us – I mean, Arkansas, if he's going to be able to take us too much further. Well – you bring in Bobby Petrino. Bobby Petrino got a standing ovation from the Touchdown Club in Little Rock a couple of years ago. Do we? Is it not in our DNA to forgive? I mean, come on. I, I just it, look. If he's focused and he gets it done, all you know, forget about that. But I, I tell you, the fans of the SEC, and you go back a hundred years ago. Remember, Franz, you know these great literary scholars. You might, Brendan. Uh, the Fugitive Poets. They wrote about the agrarian South, and as we move toward urbanization, warehousing people in these big cities, we're going to drift away from our roots. We, 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 now you're seeing people pouring out of big cities, going to small towns again. That's the SEC footprint. Texas is a big state. Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, you know, uh, Austin is now the tenth or twelfth largest city in America. Most of Texas is rural. Those are the oh. SEC fans. And, Texas and is huge. It's a ginormous it's state. It's so big. If, you, if you've ever driven through it, people don't understand. I've done the trip from California, the southern California to Florida. Hey, yeah. you know, half of folks, Texas. It, it is farther from Houston to El Paso than it is from Jacksonville, Florida to San Antonio. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just, and, and, and I remember. First time I went out to Texas, I was 14. We drove down to uh, Mexico to the boy. We were bird watching, my dad and I. I'll never forget going from uh, Corpus Christi and then uh, Robstown to Brownsville. I was like, that's pretty cool, Robstown, Brownstown, Brownsville. So, but, but Oklahoma, that's another one. We're not talking a lot about Oklahoma. Oh that God, is an God. unbelievable state. It is as red as it gets. Those people out there... And I, I, I am so sorry and, and sad that Toby Keith is no longer with us because how fun, but his legacy will live on forever. But that's Oklahoma, man. Those people are as hardcore. If you've been, and, and, and we've all spent time in Oklahoma that when you cross I 40 into Oklahoma from Arkansas, the first sign you see on the side of the interstate is. Welcome to Ten Killer State Recreation Area. I mean, it's it's just a cool state. But but anyway, about out of time. But I, I tell you, the fans of the SEC are agrarians. They're they're tied to the land. They love the land. They love their schools first before any team. The fact that those teams play for their schools that makes the love even stronger. But that's why I'm telling you, NIL, the real NIL is the guy or the gal that sticks it out, hangs in there with their teammates, doesn't quit, gets their degree, and for the rest of their lives, they can always come back to Athens or Gainesville or Fayetteville or Auburn or Tuscaloosa or Baton Rouge or wherever, Oxford, Starkville. And those people will say, hey, man, 
you never quit. That, that's that. Right now, you're getting a temporary couple hundred thousand, which is gone like that. Y'all know it's 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 being spent because kids are now asking. Hey, today's tax day, by the way, April fifteenth. Hey, tomorrow tomorrow is all hell breaks loose. The day, portal guys. reopens. Yeah, the portal and this is reopens, where, and we yeah. have a double all hell breaks loose because. The basketball portal is going strong and chaotic. Football, you know, is going to be even worse tomorrow than it's been. And we, the one thing good that's going to come out of this, guys, mark yeah. my words, is that this is going to make people understand the NCAA is dead. The yeah. buzzards, the buzzards are picking, are starting to fly down and pick its bones. Yeah, so the NCAA is dead. There's going to have to be a new organization, and the only way we're going to get around the NIL and everything like this, you have to start a new organization that that has its own rules, and it has to provide economic benefit to everybody. That is different than what they see now, because if you just jo if you join on the premise that we're going to beat NIL this way, you're going to get beat, killed in yeah. the courts. Yeah. But if you can sit there and say, we have 16 teams in the SEC, for example, uh, and, or, and you look at all of college football and you say, OK, we're going to have 90 in Division One. And these 90 teams are going to benefit economically. This is why this money from the, the $1.3 billion that they're going to get from ESPN, they're going to have to find equitable sharing in this so that everybody, so that Western Walla Walla can have its money, so that James Madison and Marshall yeah. and Georgia Southern can have their money. Because if they don't, it won't work. Well, here's a, the, and I see this in my practice, the investment side, the Green Bay Packers model. I know people that are Packers fans, and they show those certificates, that show they have X number of shares in the Packers. The populist model, where you get people investing, and I love the comment by this Perry Mason, because I live in Memphis, 1.2 million people surrounded by farmland. And I'm around farmers, I work with them, I have them. As friends, as clients, I know the people that work these farms, they work 18, 20 hours. They got lights on the tractors now, DVD players in there. They got uh, stereos. They're out there nonstop. They get it done. That's the kind of commitment that it's going to take to fix college athletics. But I'll tell you what I see happening. I really see this going on. You're going to start seeing dividend returns paid out to fans. They're going to find a way, if they're smart, to say, okay, for all you're doing, investing in our athletic programs, start showing a way for a dividend. Wealthy people, my clients, invest what's in it for me. Look at the tax implications. Instead of 501c3, the number one thing, college, the NCAA is a voluntary organization. So when, you, uh, when you're a member, you have to comply with investigations and all like that. Well, where we are going, the only rules that apply, says our, our resident attorney for sidelines, Jack Turner, my attorney. He says it's the antitrust laws. And you're right, friends. The courts will kill you. You cannot deny people the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Ain't going to happen. But you're going to start seeing the fans. Get, you better take care of the fan that gives you $100 a year, just like you do the big fan, because you never know when he he's going to have a relative or someone that comes into some money. You better treat people, the old golden rule, like you want to be treated yourself. If you've got a bunch of kids on your team that are always just, just there for the money, it's like having a business and you're so caught up in the money, you forget about the process and what it takes to get there. Greatest advice I've ever been given by my mother ever was don't punch the elevator to go to the eighth floor to your teacher when I was at Auburn that time. I said, why not? She goes, take the stairs. You'll remember the journey it took to get you to the top. Hey. Franz, unbelievable stuff. Doug I, Dean, Brendan hmm, Martin. Well, I wanted say, to, I, yeah. I just wanted to hear Franz's response to that because I know Franz I talk to him all the time too. So I was just like, he's a patriot. Know, well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> there's a lot to that as far as implications of. I like the idea of, uh, of of being able to invest and get a dividend. Yeah, but does that does that model work, Franz? 
I don't think so. I, and I think they're going to hit. The only way they're going to get the big money on this stuff, which they need, is to be able to find a way to make it a write-off. And the, when you have, if it's a write-off, then it works. Uh, I think the greatest fear of college athletics is that we go to a flat tax system where everybody pays the same thing because then people start losing write-offs for their big donations. Yeah. You're going to have to have a, a brand new organization. The players are going to have to be employees. So that, and, and you're going to be able to say, okay, you are a freshman. You're going to make say $40,000. Okay. You're a, a, a sophomore. You make 60, 80. If you make it four years through the program, you get a hundred thousand dollars. You're going to have to have insurance benefits on them. And the insurance benefits is going to, you're going to have to have it like Cobra, which you got, which Rob, you know about. Yeah. Once you, once you, you lose, once you leave or lose your job, you can carry on your benefits. Now they're going to have to find a way to make it free because catastrophic injuries happen in sports and it's not just football. You think about these, you think about these little girls in gymnastics, the, the risks that they take flying off of a balance yeah. beam yeah. that's 42 inches high. That's like this wide. And look at the stuff they do and the potential for injuries there. So yeah. it, it, there's a lot that's got to go into this. It's not just as simple as leaving the NCA, but we've got to start the process now. Yeah. I, I four, agree. Year, four years from now will be too late. No, I agree with you, but I, I do think because of my, my, profession as a financial advisor in addition to being in the media and that is this you're going to start seeing private equity and venture capital get involved in college athletics oh, yeah. when they do that that's where your dividend and i'm not talking about monstrous dividends but getting something back for what you give in to a program what we what you're going to start see happening is sure since october 15th of 2018 the portal's been the law of the land and everything you've said is spot on but I understand about building a culture of loyalty. I'm surrounded by unbelievable people. I mean, Buddy told me for a long time about Brendan. Now look who we got. Brendan Martin's our executive producer. I mean, I won the lottery on that one, okay? Um, and we got you. We got Surround yourself with great people. How do you do that? You treat them like you want to be treated yourself. But you know what these kids are screaming for, these 18-year-old kids? They're screaming for discipline. They're screaming what? for somebody to coach them. Because you know what I've always said? You know, I, I always remember this. You know, why, why are you so tough on this guy? Or why are you so tough on me, coach? Because I love you. And when I quit being tough on you, you better be worried because that means that I've lost interest. We're right. going to turn this thing around. We're going to get a commissioner. And I'll just say this like I say a lot. The NCAA is like this. The respirator's on. The priest is in the room. And they're calling the kin folks to get a good look. But you've got to find the way to make it profitable, tax benefits and everything for the donors. But you've got to get thousands of people, grassroots support, because right. if you just got a cabal of wealthy donors, they're the only ones making well, it's not things sustainable. Happen. It doesn't, it's not it's sustainable. Not the, exactly. But here's, but here, but, donor know, fatigue it, 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 is real. Why I like your idea, Rob, about the dividends and, and some version of that is that I think a lot of people are on the fence per se, if they want to, you know, donate or give money or write or, or somehow be involved. I think the buy-in and saying, Hey, you know what? There's a little, there's a little something in this for me or, or like a tax break. But, but I, I like the incentive of you feeling like you're investing in the yeah. team. And I think well, that even the marketing and the mental side of that, I think would, would be how you create that groundswell to get that movement going because that's like, Hey, I'll give this, if you're, you know, like, I think that's how these things go viral. I mean, I know how this is how they go viral yeah. and then you get that. And, and I think that's what's missing about all of these collectives. And I've said this from the very beginning and Franz and I have talked about this, my first hire, and I've been a media director for big entities and, and things like that. my first, first hire would have been a media director. Yeah. <clears throat> And, 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 and I'd have a, a plan to, to, you know, really market this and, and, and to build it out because that is really a, a missing piece in a lot of these collectives. You should be marketing and that media person should also head up a media team that funnels kids through and teaches them how to talk 
and be on camera and all these things, yeah. you know, and I, and I, and, and, and I haven't really seen a lot of that. And I think yeah. that's the, the yeah, you, of, you, you look, know. one, one thing you've, I, I know this in one of the collectives at Auburn, if you are a donor and you're a member and you're given X thousand a year, you are assigned like five student athletes, you and a group of people, you teach them how to, to how to dress, how to look people in the eye, how to, how to go on an interview and successfully, you know, you know, interview and present yourself. Hey, you've got, listen, financial literacy. It's number one thing. You can come from a really wealthy family and someone dropped $10 million in your lap when you're a freshman in college, you're going to have problems. That's what we, we got to start treating this just like we would a business. And by calls it a business, we got to start acting like it and follow through. Let's get smart people that understand that understand about accountability. Because when you start getting a dividend, if you're a fan of Florida, you pick the school, okay? I know we went long, but you've got to be able to say, okay, start winning. I get a dividend. That That's going to be fun to watch. Look, most often we see the face of Christ in the least among us. We live in the greatest country in the history of the world. We have open debate. Friends and Brendan, free speech, the First Amendment is alive and well on sidelines. Uh, follow us all the time. Tell your friends and family and neighbors. Great stuff. We value every one of our viewers and what you have to say. So keep the and comments coming. Check out coming. Franz Beard on GatorBaitMedia.com. He reads. He literally writes like four or five times a day. Show Maybe, show prep. Maybe twenty times a day. It, it's show prep right. for me, and I it's all really stuff. good. It's yeah. all really good. So you yeah, got to you got to check out True Grit Journalism. Okay, reading is like lifting weights with your brain. Get yeah. stronger, people. We'll he see writes, you tomorrow. Uh, a thought, a thoughts of the day, which, yeah. like you said, it's just Deep it's really thoughts. no. It's it, but it is it's, it's incredible. It's like, it is incredible. So I love it. Check out, call check the, out, Iron Duke check out the last thing I put in there today. My one final pithy thought today, and when I'm talking about how a kid can go, can get in the transfer portal. He's played just played in the Mini Pearls Biscuit Bowl, and he he goes into the portal. They give him fifty thousand dollars to come uh, up front, m whip out money, with more to come when he transfers. The coach doesn't like him at the new place because he paints his toenails with polka dots on them. The coach and I do that, and, and he and he gets his feelings hurt. So then he says, "Okay, I'm transferring again." At the end of spring, he transfers again to a new coach that looks at those toenails and says says not that there's anything wrong with that and says come on and gives him another fifty thousand. So he has had he has gone to two different schools without ever playing a down. <laughs> yeah. And by the and next fall will be at will will have played you know will have been at his third school. Yeah. You know on the second school on the field, third school says him and then okay at the end of this year, after after playing in the Hank Kimball, uh, you know, uh, County Agents Bowl, he gets to he says, "I'm transferring again because I got one more year of eligibility." You don't think that can happen under our present system? It will. It, it can, and we got to stop the musical chairs because eventually you are going to be caught without a chair. Great mm -hmm. show, everybody. Love the freedom of expression and thought. Thanks to all of our listeners and viewers. We really appreciate you. We'll see you in the morning. We're out of here, Bye. folks. Have a great day. In a perfect world, you'd set a health goal and results would happen overnight. In this world, the real world, it takes time, dedication, and the right support to achieve your best self. The Vitamin Shops health enthusiasts are here to make sure you're not wasting a single moment on the wrong supplements. From the highest quality sports nutrition and superfoods to the most sought after trends, you'll find a huge variety of science-backed solutions for every goal and the people to help guide you along the path to greatness. Unbelievably, every two minutes in our communities, a child is either bought or sold for sex. I'm Ari Dickey, board member for the Nashville Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition. Join me and millions of others in our fight against human trafficking and for its victims by helping to educate the most vulnerable among us, our middle and high school students. Go to nhtcoalition.org 
become a partner, and help keep our family safe because none of God's children are for sale.